Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Steve Davis of Colorado Quality Research. Steve, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. We're going to talk about necrotic enteritis. Not a big surprise. I mean, you're one of the big researchers in the country that has really focused on, on that particular disease. Um, but I understand that there are actually different variants or strains of Clostridium perfringens, which causes necrotic enteritis. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, I mean, we have found that getting isolates from across the country, different uh, complexes and companies, that even within the same company, uh, and sometimes even within the same complex, that different farms have uh, isolates that are much more pathogenic than others. And um, there's, we don't know exactly why this is happening, but that's why there are some companies and complexes that are having more success in being ABF, that type of thing, uh, versus others, where others are really struggling uh, because, or they have specific farms that really struggle with really uh, serious necrotic enteritis issues. And we've been trying to figure out, you know, are there ways that we can measure this? And so far, we found, uh, at least in, in our facility, that the best way to, to evaluate and measure the pathogenicity or the virulence of these isolates is to put them in chickens and, uh, and see how pathogenic they are. Yeah. And have these more virulent strains always been there and we're just catching up to it now or is this something new that's evolved over the years? I, I think they've always been there. Uh, I think that uh, the products that we've had uh, available to us in the past have um, you know, basically kept those isolates in check. And uh, now uh, with the direction that we're going, a lot less products being used as feed additives and that type of thing that now those uh, isolates are ending up being able to bloom and take, taking over um, in, in a lot more and having a lot more effect on the flocks. So are we talking about two or three different kinds of strains or hundreds of different kinds? I, I think we're talking about hundreds of different strains, no doubt. I mean, the, the range varies tremendously of what we're seeing out in the field is that some complexes are seeing very dramatic, very pathogenic outbreaks of necrotic enteritis where others just have nagging problems, mm -hmm. that type of thing. And, uh, but it's a very complex disease, so it's, it's not necessarily always the Clostridium perfringens isolate by itself. You have these other factors like coccidiosis, and uh, environmental conditions. And, and so it makes, this is definitely a syndrome type of, of problem we're dealing with. And so it's, it's not as easy to put, get your hands wrapped around it. So I think this is something this industry is gonna be dealing with for years to come before we get some, uh, some answers. And when we talk about more virulent strains, specifically what are you seeing in the broiler houses? Does it uh, attack at a, at a different time? And to, to what extent does it affect bird performance? That, that's a very good question. I mean, there are, we have found that there are some isolates that are not near as pathogenic when it comes to causing really acute mortality from, nor uh, from necrotic enteritis. Uh, but we find other isolates that do cause very rapid, uh, you know, necrotic enteritis mortality. We have others that in, in, in that situation, you can have an isolate that causes a lot of mortality, but it doesn't necessarily impact weight gain and feed conversion as bad as, as some others. We're finding other isolates that it's, they really don't kill very many birds, but they impact weight gain, feed conversion performance much more dramatically. So, uh, and this is something that we see that varies from complex to complex and farm to farm as well. So it, it is a, we're just, we're just learning how complex this, this problem truly is. And is there a test that's readily available to determine 
what strain of necrotic enteritis you have in your flock? How, how do you know what's there? No, that, that's the thing is it's, uh, I mean, there's uh, work being done. Obviously, they can, uh, there's some lab tests that can be done to evaluate what kind of toxins they produce, that type of thing. I think there's going to be, you know, we keep working on um, the, the whole concepts of looking at family trees and that type of thing. And you get into to things that are way past my abilities <laughs> and we start talking about uh, some of those things. But uh, uh, we're a long ways away from being able to figure out exactly where these isolates fall and how closely related they are versus uh, how far they are. From and have you noticed any patterns, Steve? Um, in other words, do the farms that have the more virulent strains of necrotic enteritis uh, are there any common management practices or environmental considerations on those farms? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we we do know that, I mean, some of the farms that struggle with uh, moisture uh, issues, humidity issues, we know that that's a real key issue uh, in controlling the humidity in the chicken houses. And um, we find that there are some farms that um, if they've had management issues in the past, some growers are just better growers than others in keeping, uh, you know, really good management conditions. Uh, some of those definitely have less problems. But, uh, but amazingly, uh, some of your very best managers and your brand new farms and clean, clean out farms, first flock on new litter, are the ones that have the greatest uh, challenges and, and the worst outbreaks in necrotic. So there's a lot of these different types of things that are happening that actually make, make it a little more difficult to try to tie in what factors are playing a role into this. So Steve, on these farms that have these virulent cases, what can you recommend in terms of getting it under control? That's a very good question, and, and there's two different answers to that because there's some companies and complexes that are 100% antibiotic-free marketing, and there's other complexes that they're only a percentage. And so those that are only marketing a percentage of their flocks antibiotic-free, they still have the options to be able to treat with products that we've had approved for years, uh, either water-soluble or, or in the feed, to treat those those flocks, um, the complexes and companies that are 100% uh, antibiotic free, though, when it comes to marketing, sadly enough, they are very limited on what they can treat these flocks with. And uh, many of them, the reports that we're getting is they're struggling to get uh, relief from these outbreaks and uh, be able to get a, a healthy flock to the processing plant. Uh, yeah, and tell me about, um, you, you bring up a good point about getting a healthy flock into the processing plant because, you know, there's been a lot of talk, especially over the last year, about salmonella. There have been different outbreaks and yeah. so forth. Um, how much a, of an impact does the health of the bird have on the amount of salmonella that is going into the processing plant? There's a lot of theories <laughs> that uh, different people have. I, I'm a firm believer that uh, healthy birds are just all, I mean, a, a, a healthy population in general is just gonna be healthier in a, a lot of different areas. And so I, I don't necessarily, I don't think there's any science that proves that if you're having necrotic enteritis problems, that you're gonna have more salmonella problems or campylobacter problems, those kinds of things. But it sure, appears that these problems do go hand in hand and and we do know that there's things like higher condemnations that occur higher late mortality that's really bacterial related because you have to remember that 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 intestine and the damage that the necrotic enteritis causes to that intestine opens up the most important immune uh, organ of the bird the, the gut itself, and that opens it up for 
uh, other bacteria to be able to get systemic in that bird and end up with um, more health issues. Thank We've been you. talking to Steve Davis of Colorado Quality Research. Steve, it's always a pleasure. Thank you again. Thank you, Jeff.